Hello and welcome to this video. How far can you push FurComp to? It was designed as a compressor that really can be pushed. By default, there's no latency or phase shift or anything like that. If you turn on look ahead, which I won't do yet, you get a bit of latency, but still no phase shift or anything like that. So in this video, we'll be doing far too much compression and seeing how far we can push FurComp to before it starts to break up. So this is all the default settings. Let's see what that sounds like. So there we're peaking at around 21 dB of gain reduction, but the gain reduction won't be swinging as much as that. Um, although bear in mind that these meters are smoothed out so the meter doesn't return back to zero as quickly as the actual gain reduction returns back to zero, even on the peak meters. You see that they uh, are slightly smoothed out. So let's see if we can get it a bit more compression movement by speeding up the release. So we've got some drum punchiness there, but I'm not hearing any distortion. So let's maybe set the ratio to infinity so that we don't actually distort when we uh, increase the makeup gain. And let's set the attack to zero. So you'll see that the limiting indicator now lights up because we're now limiting samples. So let's start at zero again and lower the threshold and see what we can get away with. We also need to reduce the makeup. So we're doing some pretty hard limiting there and it sounds a bit rough in the low frequencies. What can we do to make this a bit cleaner? Maybe make the release time a bit longer? So that sounds a bit gritty, but not too bad. Obviously we're completely removing any transients, really sucking the life out of the music. This is not really what we want to do, but it's a fun experiment. So let's do some, I'm gonna leave these settings as they are for a bit and we'll do some listening comparisons. And of course it goes without saying that when you set the attack to zero samples, you are really getting zero samples. So you get the idea. We can crush quite a lot and it sounds a little bit gritty, but not too bad. But what's nice about this is that in real life, you don't usually need to do that much compression. So we can just do a little bit of hard limiting and it doesn't sound too bad. Let's go back to doing too much compression. What can we do to clean this up slightly? Well, we can set the high pass filter to a higher value. And remember, this doesn't 
change what the compressor is compressing because the compressor turns down the volume of everything. It just affects what the compressor is listening to. But if we filter out the low frequencies that the compressor is listening to, we'll get a little bit less distortion. So let's try this. So we're completely sucking the life out of a tune, but with a little bit less distortion, and it sounds a bit warmer. What else can we do? Let's turn off the sidechain filtering. Let's go to a bassy part. You can hear on this sub bass, the original sub bass already has a little bit of distortion on it, which I added while mixing. But if we do very aggressive compression, especially if we reduce the release even further, you can hear that as I toggle the compression on and off, you'll hear that the sub bass becomes more and more distorted. So here's a lot of distortion on the sub bass. And here's only just the less distorted original mix. Maybe let's emphasize this a bit more. So now, let's see what Look Ahead does to that bass distortion. In fact, the second bar makes it very, very clear the difference. So here's Look Ahead off, and here's Look Ahead on. Look Ahead on, Look Ahead off. So that's the main function of look ahead and then it lowers amplitude modulation distortion or the harmonic distortion that becomes apparent when you are very quickly changing the volume of low frequencies. Let's just listen one more time. This is no look ahead and look ahead on. So I hope this video answers the question, how far can you push Furcomp 2? Furcomp 1 and 2 were both originally designed to be compressors that you could really push very far without worrying about what you were doing to the signal. Obviously, if you overcompress, you are going to suck the life out of your music. But if you really want something to sit at the very front of a mix, but you don't want to add any more distortion, you can feel fairly relaxed in using Furcomp 1 or 2. And you can also feel relaxed because I designed it to not use too much CPU. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.